day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be excited in it. Welcome to Old Otterbein. Welcome to the presence of the Lord. We want you to sit back, but then participate in this high holy Sunday as we sing our glad hosannas and praise God that God is marching into our world and into our temple. We will we are broadcasting today from the sanctuary and we are excited to be a part of worship. So let us pray as we open up. Lord God, we thank you that this is the day you have made it. We are so excited in this day. It is warm today, God. You are watering your earth, which makes the flowers bloom and makes the earth uh, rejuvenate on this great day. God, this is the day that we celebrate the triumphant entry into Jesus, into Jerusalem. God, we know that there's a portent of things to come, but for today, we celebrate. And we thank you, God, that we are all here together to say, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us, Lord. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I with glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Let us greet one another with these words. May the peace of Christ be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us enter the city of God today and, and sing, sing hosannas, hosannas to our, our king. king. Let us turn our backs on the powers that grasp and control and, and open, open our, our hearts, hearts to, to the Son of God, God riding on, on a donkey. donkey. Let us join his parade, surrounded, surrounded by outcasts and prostitutes, prostitutes the blind and the, the leper. leper. Let us follow the one who brought freedom and peace and, and walk in solidarity, solidarity with, with the, the abandoned, abandoned and, and oppressed. oppressed. Let us shout for joy at Christ's coming and join his disciples, welcoming, welcoming the broken, healing the sick, dining, dining with outcasts. Outcast. Let us touch and see as God draws near, riding, riding in triumph, triumph towards the, the cross. And please join me in our opening hymn, which we found in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 278, Hosanna, Loud, Hosanna.
it is relatively easy for us to roster someone to go and gather palm leaves and spread in the church today. And we can see, we can easily find music and a few good words to help us remember and reenact Palm Sunday. But what if you arrived inviting us to really lay down something important to us to acknowledge your arrival? What if we knew the imminence of the danger that accompanies you? Or sense that the authorities were watching us as we worship? How then, Jesus, would we meet you today? And what would we spread before you? And how would we regard humility from the one we hope will save the world? Palm Sunday, Jesus. Help us see how and where you enter our world today and what you ask us to lay at your feet and how we may welcome you in. Amen and amen. In our sung prayer response today, we'll be found in the faith we sing, number 2007, Holy, Holy, Holy. We will sing twice. Good morning. The Old Testament lessons this morning are from the Psalms, chapter 118, verses 19 through 29, and Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16. The first from Psalm 18, 118. Open for me the gates where the righteous enter, and I will go in and thank the Lord. These gates lead to the presence of the Lord, and the godly enter there. I thank you for answering my prayer and giving me victory. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. This is the day the Lord has made. We will, re we will rejoice and be glad in it. Please, Lord, please save us. Please, Lord, give us success. Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, shining upon us. Take the sacrifice and bind it with cords on the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Thanks, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. And now from Psalm 31. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in distress. Tears blur my eyes. My body and soul are withering away. I am dying from grief. My years are shortened by sadness. Sin has drained, drained my strength. I am wasting away from within. I am scorned by all of my enemies and despised by my neighbors. Even my friends are afraid to come near me. When they see me on the street, they run the other way. I am ignored as if I were dead, as if I were a broken pot. I have heard the many rumors about me and I am surrounded by terror. My enemies conspire against me, plotting to take my life. But I am trusting you, O Lord, saying, You are my God. My future is in your hands. Rescue me from those who hunt me down relentlessly. Let your favor shine upon your servant. In your unfailing love, 
rescue me. Our New Testament lessons come from the Gospels of John and Mark and from Philippians. John 12, verses 12 through 16. The next day, the news that Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem swept through the city. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet him. They shouted, praise God, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, hail to the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and rode on it, fulfilling the prophecy that said, don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming, riding on a donkey's colt. His disciples didn't understand at the time that this was a fulfillment of prophecy. But after Jesus entered his glory, they remembered what had happened and realized that these things had been written about him. From the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 1 through 7. It was now two days before Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The leading priests and the teachers of religious law were still looking for an opportunity to capture Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the Passover celebration, they agreed, or the people may riot. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard. She broke open the jar and poured the perfume over his head. Some of those at the table were indignant. Why waste such expensive perfume, they asked. It could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor. So they scolded her harshly. But Jesus replied, leave her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a thing to me? You will always have the poor among you and you can help them whenever you want to, but you will not always have me. And finally, Philippians chapter two, verses five through 11. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. God, we started with songs of hallelujah and hosanna, songs of exuberance and passion, being excited for the hope that you bring. God, we dance, the children dance at the joy, at the thought that you were coming to save us. And yet, oh God, we could not foresee the suffering and the pain that you would endure, that we may not endure the pain of eternal death. So God, as we enter into this day and into this holy season, let us hold together this hope of this joy that we bought into Palm Sunday knowing that you would not ever leave us or forget, forsake us. And God, give us the strength to endure as we face our own crosses, as we face our own mortality, and give us the hope that we may look forward to you coming again in our lives to always be with us, strengthen and walk our roads that we may be the very image of you, Christ, in this world. 
We thank you, God, for all of these wonderful things in this precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. This is the beginning of our most holy week in our Christian tradition. It is a time like no other. Emotions run the gamut from being excited to being very sad. It's the time from intense joy to intense sorrow to then overwhelming celebration. Today is Palm or Passion Sunday. And if you notice and look at our title, it says from Palm to Passion Sun Sunday. So I want to walk you through the palm from the palms to the passion. Jesus has told his disciple, go to the city. I want to celebrate Palm Sunday. I, I'm sorry. I want to celebrate the Passover with you. Go and find a coat and a donkey, a donkey and a coat tied together and bring them to me. When the disciples got to that place, they found that it was just like Jesus said. So they bought the donkey to him and they placed their jackets over his back for a makeshift saddle. As he did that, he began to walk into the city of Jerusalem. People had already heard that he was coming. So they were excited. There was this great prophet who had fed so many, who had healed so many, who was wise and spoke words of God. So they were really, really excited. They had taken palm branches and they had laid it at his feet and they started shouting, Hosanna to the King of David, meaning, and they understood God save us. They knew that this was a time that somebody was coming to break that chain of Roman oppression. The children were dancing. It was such a festive atmosphere. And they knew that finally, finally, they would be free. Let me stop here and give you a little bit of background. During Israel's trial, many, many years before, God had, had once again saved them from the Egyptians. God gave them a time of rest and tell them to have a celebration with booths. And the booths were created from palm branches, date branches. God told them to celebrate seven years because God was their savior. They, God had delivered them once more from the hands of Egyptians. In ancient time, palm farms were palm fronds, excuse me, were usually used conquering warriors. So palm fronds really had a significance. So when Jesus was walking down to Jerusalem, they uh, got the nearest palm fronds and they were waving them and putting them at his feet. They understood that this was a time of celebration. It was not unusual for people to do that. You see, the roads were muddy and dusty and very, very pitted. pitted. They had wet wagons and cartwheels. They were animals. It was a rough road. And recognize that Jesus was not riding on a stallion or a horse that was very high. He was riding. Riding on a donkey on to also cushion the ride of this king that they knew was coming. This, in terms of the booths, 
was such a precursor to Jesus coming. They remembered the Passover when they were celebrating were palms, palm fronds before. Going back to the processional, people began to shout. They began to enjoy itself. They began to just recognize that God was present. It was definitely a high point in Jesus' life. After the processional, Jesus celebrated the Passover with some of his friends and with the man he had recently healed. During that time, a woman, and we, don't, we weren't given the name at this particular scripture, but a woman who, God, who, who Jesus had cast demons out, came to him weeping, weeping, weeping. She was weeping in gratitude for everything God had done for her, how Jesus had seen her, recognized Jesus saw him, her, her. Women were not in, given high estate at that time, but Jesus saw this woman, had compassion on her, healed her from the demons. And so she wept in gratitude. She wept so much that her tears drip to his feet and she took her most precious possession a jar of oil and put it on his head and anointed him as she was weeping she washed her his feet with her tears and then dried them with her long long hair now just imagine for a moment that you are so distraught, you are so saddened, you are so overwhelmed with gratitude that you're crying. If she was probably not crying pretty, she was crying ugly, but she was crying not, nonetheless, not for sadness, but for gratitude. And she wiped his feet with her hair. His disciples, who were not used to this overwhelming show of affection, criticized her and said, wait a minute, why did you break this, this jar of oil? You know how much it cost. You know what we could use for this jar? We could feed so many people. All they could think about was the money especially G Judas is Iscariot. And Jesus had to stop them. And they said, this woman is, has done this out of gratitude. Leave her alone. The poor you will always have with you. You could feed them at any time, but me, you will not have. And so, and so she made for perpetuity this woman's gratitude for the gift that she, that he, she received. Recognized too that they were not over, overwhelmingly wealthy people. They went around the countryside preaching and teaching. They fed people, they healed people, but they didn't stay anywhere long. They had women that helped them with their physical needs, with their food. But as for putting lots of money, they didn't have a lot. They had a purse, but what everything they had, they gave to the poor. So seeing Jesus having extravagant something done to him must have really, really, really shocked them. But Jesus had a second thing on his head, on his mind. But just like the celebration, this was a highlight 
in Jesus' life. Recognize we're going from palms to passion. Soon, Jesus would be crucified. His entire life had been spent helping people. His entire life had been spent healing people. His entire life had been spent doing the, the father, Father's will. Everything he did was because the Father told him to do it. And for the one time in his life, the one time someone affirmed him, the crowd shouted for him, the, women, the woman bathed his feet with her hair. And yet, even then, Jesus was criticized. We celebrate Palm Sunday as a joyful reminder that Jesus still comes humble, riding on a don donkey. The donkey symbolized that he came in peace. He didn't come as the king with a sword and many, many um, marchers with uh, taking over the city. He didn't come to, to um, overwhelm everyone. in the way that they thought, <coughs> excuse me. He came with a pack animal, lowly, that had to be uh, led around. He didn't even have a saddle. He had their cloaks and he sat on borrowed cloaks that think about it, once he sat on it and he went on the ground, it was dirty. But yet at that time, at that time, they felt that that was, not, that was not bad to put the cloaks on them that, that this conquering king could get on the donkey. But I wanna pause for a minute. I wanna pause for a minute because the people did not understand that their glad Hosanna would turn to, to fear. Because as they were celebrating, they believed in their lives for once they had hope. We celebrate this Palm Sunday that our conquering King has come and we too have hope. We wave our palm branches and enjoy knowing that the green palms, the green of the palm symbolize the new life and flexibility that we are given because God is our king. This toughness, toughness of the palm symbolizes the resilience that we all have to have and that God gives us. And the waving of the palm represents the wind of the Holy Spirit blowing through our lives. But like the passion, like the Palm Sunday, we do not get to stay at our exuberance. There is coming a time when our palms will turn into our passions. At the end of this Lenten season, let us be like the woman who knelt at the feet of Jesus. Let us weep in our gratitude but our sorrow in the things that we have done that are not like God, but recognize that Jesus comes into our lives. Let us remember how much God loves us, saves us, delivers us, protects us, and brings us to himself. Let us offer to God our sweet perfume of our own self-sacrifice, of turning away from the things that are not like God's. Let us lay our very selves at the feet of Jesus, of the one who sacrificed himself for us. Allow us for once 
to see us as God sees us, clean, pure, healed, and in God's image. In this period of time, let us rejoice as we see God's glory, as we sit at God's feet. Take a time to remember what it feels like when God first found you. Take a moment to enjoy the embrace of God and the approval of God. Take a moment to enjoy that God loves you in spite of. Take a moment. Take a moment to realize, although you may not hear God's and feel him close, he promises to always be there. Take a moment to wave your palm branch in a joyful exuberance of the still present God. But remember, beloved, Friday is coming. In our lives, there are going to be Fridays when those who have affirmed you and said, hallelujah, you're so wonderful, will say, crucified you, crucify you. When those who rejoice for you even being present, for being who you are, will say, kill him. The same crowd that rejoice at your arrival will watch in horror as you lay beaten, bruised, rejected, and scorned. You see, the Fridays in our lives are coming. But I have to tell you, Sunday's coming as well. The Sundays in your lives are your Resurrection Sunday. Look forward to hope for everything God has done, will do, will bring you through, and has brought you through. And recognize that in the res resurrection, you will be like Christ. Amen, beloved, and amen. And please join me in our response to the sermon, which will be number 292 in the United Methodist Hymnal, What Wondrous Love Is This?
And through eternity, I'll sing on. I'll sing on. This is the time for the offering. And we respond to God's word through our faithful giving. Recognize that we give not just our our tithes and our offering, we give ourselves in sacrifice. And in this world, our sacrifice is often financial. But in giving that way, you allow all of us to give even more in mission and ministry. You allow us to continue to be the hands and the feet of God, to be what God has called us to be and do what God has called us to do. We know that the Lord loves us as we give cheerfully, yet God also loves us because we give not of necessity, but because it allows us to give ministry, give in ministry to the world and community around us. You may give your offering online at the old audubon 250org donate. And we appreciate that you have been cheerful givers and faithful givers. And God sees your widow, widow's might and even to your abundance. And we thank you. This is time for our announcements. We continue to pray for those on our prayer concerns. Um, on our list that we're praying for every week, we have taken people off the list and people put people back on it. But we want you to pray for every week. We want you to pray for them. So. Uh, make sure you print them out and put them on your refrigerator so that you may continue to pray. Recognize that God hears our prayers and answers our prayers at all times. Um, we also uh, are continuing. We're really, really, really close um, to opening again. We have, we'll have some uh, announcements uh, forthcoming about what we will do. We will start um, uh, with... Uh, being outside first, but we'll definitely um, let you know we are so close. And I just want you to recognize that though we have had friends and family who have been affected by COVID, as far as we know, 
none of the membership of Old Audubon, um, we lost through death, through uh, dying from COVID. So even though it feels as if this has been, and it definitely has been uh, a whole year, that it has saved lives. And so for that, we do give God glory. Again, your, um, we uh, thank you for continuing to give throughout this time. And it has allowed us to even go and do the work of the Reentering Well Committee. We still have Noonday Prayer on Wednesday. And um, please call me, people have been calling. The number is free and I sit there and I wait for you and we do pray for you together, amen. This is our last uh, Sunday for our, uh, miss, our mission of Pro Bono Resource Center of Maryland. Um, when you're giving, uh, you can designate a part of the giving to the Pro Bono uh, Mission organization. Uh, we will, uh, we continue to celebrate them and we'll send a uh, donation from them. So they continue to do that, uh, con uh, that important uh, work of training lawyers um, to play an important role in rent uh, court and other evictions and other legal issues. Amen. Uh, again, if gifting to the uh, gifting to, uh, if you were shopping on Amazon. Please designate Nate Old Audubon in Amazon Small. It's Old Audubon, Baltimore United Methodist Church. Uh, the church receives a percentage and uh, it doesn't cost you anything and it's no any, any taxes, but it allows us to uh, continue to function. Um, and everything that you d do and every penny that you uh, donate to us has always been used for ministry, amen. Uh, Volunteers are needed to feed hungry people. We hope to coordinate volunteer opportunities in the com coming months. We do support the Maryland Food Bank, which I think is also coming up as our, um, as our ministry opportunity. And our details are coming soon. So you can always uh, email us at oldottavine at gmail, and we'll give you more information about how you can volunteer at the food banks and the movable uh, feasts. Um, we um, would like to help our congregation get vaccinated as quickly as we can. I am part of a group of people who allow and get people vaccinated. So if you've had a hard time or you would like to get vaccinated and you are eligible, now it's uh, 60 and up, or if you're in the service industry, or if you have certain um, underlying issues, you can get vaccinated. Uh, my email is here. So please uh, connect with me if you need a vaccine. I've been doing it every day. Um, you can also connect with Cindy. We have been um, connected with people who can get you vaccinated. So please take the opportunity if possible to get your vaccine. We have something special coming up this week. This is the start of Holy Week. This Thursday is Monday Thursday. And we're doing a joint study with Mount Vernon Mount Vernon Place will have the Bible study on Monday, Thursday, that the link is there. Please take part of it. Um, it is our uh, connectional in, in our cluster group. Um, and we have a young woman who is going to do the, um, the Monday, store, Monday, Monday, Thursday Bible study. So please, um, the information is right there. Uh, it is at seven o'clock. We're ex excited about it. Um, and um, we want to uh, be able to, I'm sorry, it's not Friday, it's 6.30 for Thursday. Um, but we're excited about it. And we want to show our uh, support to this young new ministry um, at Mount Vernon. And then Friday night, we will co commemorate the Stations of the Cross again with Mount Vernon. 
uh, in a Tenebrae Zoom service. It is scheduled for this one at seven. That is the information there. Um, this is going to be a very special time. It's going to be a time that we remember our mortality. We remember what Jesus has done for us. And we remember because of that, we are actually free. So come and celebrate this time. It is about a 45 minute to 50 minute service. Um, and just take the time to click on the link at seven o'clock uh, on Friday. Final uh, announcement next, oh, next to the final, because Cindy has an announcement. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. Come and join us as we celebrate our risen King. We will have a very special service and I am so pleased to announce, we will have drive-by communion at 12.30 right after service ends. So uh, take part of our communions of our Easter Sunday service, and then afterwards come and let us celebrate communion this uh, coming Sunday. Amen. And Cindy has an announcement. Hi, for anybody who's visiting, my name is Cindy Burkert. I'm a, a retired elder um, in connection at Old Otterbein, but I'm the co-chair of the 250th anniversary celebration of the 1771 founding of our church. And I just wanted to let you know that um, there has been a very slight delay on the um, posting of the concert, which will be our March gift to the community, to our church community and the larger community by Jordan Prescott and uh, Connor may have further news about that, but it will definitely be a Holy Week um, experience for you in addition, a musical experience to add to these other uh, experiences that Pastor has mentioned to us. And it will be out there for the foreseeable future. So um, I got a taste of, uh, of Jordan's music uh, online and I'm really looking forward to having this um, up. In the next 10 days or so, uh, shortly after Easter, you'll receive a constant contact with a full uh, update on our 250th celebration and uh, looking forward to um, having more and more people interested. Our webmaster and also co-chair of the celebration, Jim Guest, is creating a guest book for our website. And I've been beating the bushes for people who have EUB and United Brethren uh, DNA, spiritual DNA, and inviting them to check in frequently with our website. And I thought, how fun would it be if we had people offering their memories, their celebrations, uh, talking about their families whose uh, DNA is in this church. And so he's going to uh, he's going to put the guest book out there very soon. Um, and we also have um, a photo and bio of Reverend Sarah Andrew Schlickert, who will be preaching for us in um, May. And um, Pastor Sarah has also recently been appointed district superintendent in the Annapolis district. So it's kind of a double celebration. So she'll be starting that on July 1st, but she is committed to being part of um, the, our celebration and, and very much a, um, a child of the EUB. She's a fourth generation pastor and they came out of the EUB all the way through her dad, uh, Rick Andrews. So um, I hope that you will frequently go back to the website, old Otterbein UMC 250.org go back, check out the updates, check out what's going on there because there's something happening um, almost every week that's being added to the website and um, reaching out to a bunch of people across the country. And um, if we're fortunate, we might have a trivia question uh, of the week starting very soon. And then um, once a month, we'll give you the answers to the questions. So um, more news coming, but it's great to be able to share with you some uh, some things that are going on as part of our 250th celebration. Thanks for the time, Pastor. Amen. And it's now time for the prayers, so sharing our joys and greater than we can understand. You are vaster than we can imagine. You are more amazing than we can put into words. So with awe and deep gratitude, we pray. And please unmute yourself as we pray together. Our Father, 
who art in heaven. Who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. come. Thy will, will, will be done. done. On earth. On earth. As, it as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day, day our daily, daily bread. bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us in the temptation and hatred. But deliver us from our sins. Thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. And please join me in our closing hymn, which will be found in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 299, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Amen. As we go to the, the read the benediction today, I would have you to read the, the bowls. Now we understand that when you unmute, that is at different uh, speed because we wanna do this as a community to unmute yourself only when you're reading the bowl part. So let's try this all together. Amen. God of hopefulness, God of our life on this holy day of palms and passions, and through this holiest of weeks, when our Lenten journey finds our completion through pain, sorrow, despair, illness, losses of all kinds, through fear, anger, hatred, vitriol, and finger pointing, through a self-examination of all the ways we work against you, against your hope and dreams for creation, against your love poured out in flesh and blood, we hang our heads and bow our hearts. Seeking, Seeking your, your forgiveness, yearning for, for, for your guidance, desiring your compassion. compassion. Fill us, we pray, with, with the, the ability, ability to turn, turn to you, turn to you feeling, feeling for your, for your grace. grace.
open our spirits that we, we may take you in. Take you in. Let, let you in. Receive you in. Take you into our hearts and our hearts and minds and souls. And souls. Let you in. That, that we, we might return to you, to you. Return, return to you, you. you. transform in, in you, through, through you, you. By, by you, for you. you. Transformed once more this day, this week, into a new self, me, God, in you. May we become a new people, a gentle people, a people of love and compassion, born anew from our deepest sorrow through the breath of your forgiveness and love. And, and then, then may we all do likewise. Do likewise. likewise. Forgive and love. Amen and amen. Amen, everyone. Let the peace of Christ go with you this week, this day. Recognize that we're rejoicing today, but Friday's coming. But after Friday, Sunday is here. We thank you for all of the people who are in the background. We want to thank Betty and Mimi and Connor, because they have really worked well in the background. Um, if you notice the back of this, the uh, altar is beautiful. If you want to decorate the altar for Easter, we'll be here next week. Please let us know we'll, on, on Saturday so that we can decorate the altar again for Easter. And do not forget that after Easter Sunday, we will have communion, drive-by communion in the bags. And so we appreciate you. We thank you for hanging in there, even through everything, to recognize that God is still praised and we're still here. Don't forget Thursday, we have Monday, Thursday service at 6.30 and Friday, we have Stations of the Cross at 7. It's in constant contact. Just uh, uh, click on the link. Enjoy. You will find that this is a, a, uh, something that will be good for your, your soul. Have a great, great week. Thank you for all that you all have done and all that you have been together with us. Amen and amen. And have a great week. We'll see you less next week. Amen.